historically what's happened with brain injury survivors in America is that they are relegated to two or three different types of settings. In the worst case scenario, uh, they're considered so inappropriate or such a misfit in society that they might wind up in, uh, you know, in the penal uh, in institution of some kind, and, and that's a, a, a grievous mistake in my uh, understanding of things. Many times they can wind up on mental health uh, treatment facilities of, of some kind, on a, on a mental health track. So they may go through psychiatric crisis units that could end up in uh, institutions you know, for the severe and persistent uh, mentally ill. These are not appropriate places for someone with a neurological condition because a lot of times these psychotropic drugs are blunting the one thing that the person needs in order to regain uh, you know, lost abilities. Uh, oddly enough, the, the brain needs itself in order to heal itself. And so uh, these environments, these mental health environments, are often not the right place for some with a brain injury. The uh, other alternative that America has historically provided is simply one of neglect. The person may be put in a nursing home just because no other options exist, and in which case they don't receive any kind of therapy. They just sort of languish, and I've run across hundreds of those cases. Uh, and every year in America, there are 1.6 million people that sustain a brain injury but there are only about 5,000 long-term beds for those uh, individuals. And so you can imagine the, this great uh, you know, um, shortage of services that is out there. It's, it's quite frustrating. The typical patient falls on the milder side of uh, brain injuries. Uh, something like 87% of that 1.6 million people per year sustain a milder brain injury versus a moderate or severe injury. And for those milder injuries, um, many people, uh, you know, they will deal with the injury in such a way so that it will resolve more or less over a given amount of time. But what we're learning right now about brain injury is also kind of uh, complicating our understanding of brain injury is the, is the fact that brain injury also is disease accelerative and disease causative. And that means uh, simply that once you have a brain injury, things are more likely to go wrong with you physiologically over the long run than had you not sustained that brain injury. It's because you're messing up the, the control center of your entire body. People are made more vulnerable by brain injury in a, in a variety of ways, and one of the ways uh, that this can manifest, for example, is uh, a seizure. Uh, I've come across numerous cases where, you know, you know, the person, say, may have had, uh, may have been tackled on the football field, or may have uh, fallen down a flight of stairs, and Six months later, they think that you know everything's fine. They don't have the headaches anymore. But then a year later, they all of a sudden hit the ground and have you know suffer a grand mal seizure, and they're uh, you know convulsing, and their muscles are contracting, and they go to the hospital, and you know they they find out this terrible news that not only do they have a seizure, but it could happen again, and suddenly you know they have to you know, re-examine their life in the context of having epilepsy. All of this, you know, being from a, a, an injury that they thought was minor and they thought they would, uh, you know, resolve, it's actually become a very serious issue. Uh, other people who have sustained mild injuries may have uh, problems with balance, you know, much later on in life. And, you know, they might, may not even notice that they find themselves avoiding activities that they once enjoyed. Swimming, for example, is, uh, is something that requires a lot of, uh, of balance and, and a lot of sense of balance, and yet people will sometimes give that up following an injury just because, uh, for some reason, they, they, it, being in the water makes them uncomfortable. 
Uh, brain injury is also disease accelerative, and what that means is that it can hasten up uh, or hasten problems uh, physiologically that uh, may not have uh, been much of a problem before. Uh, the most glaring example of this is in uh, geriatric patients with brain injuries. So, you know, many times they, you know, geriatric patients fall and sustain their brain injury that way. Well, what they'll find out is that uh, Alzheimer's uh, will uh, onset more uh, prematurely in those patients than patients without brain injury. In, in the hospital that I work for, for example, there's not a single patient in that hospital from Oklahoma. All of the patients have come from out of state just to go to this hospital. And I think you'll find in most rehabs in the country, that's probably the case where many of their patients have also come from out of state as well. The truth is, is that there's so few of these you know, specialty centers out there that people will travel great distances in order to get to them. Uh, in my book, for example, there is a uh, young man that I wrote about. He is a five-year-old named uh, Brian Larson that had a brain tumor and developed severe problems as a result of that. His parents were actually looking at a school in Massachusetts. Although they lived in California, they were willing to send him across the country to get the right kind of care. And uh, that, to me, is a, is a terrible injustice. Geography plays a huge role in how well you will do after a brain injury. If you get a brain injury in Iowa, for example, uh, there are so many uh, support services in place already for you that you will uh, not find yourself uh, you know, in, a di in as difficult a position as you may in other states. Um, just across, you know, the river, so to speak, in Nebraska, if you have a certain kind of brain injury there that, say, you have uh, behavioral problems, there's almost uh, nothing for you in terms of rehabilitation or uh, uh, support services or any kind of funding. Uh, and so you could very likely uh, just have to do without uh, services. And this is, this is a real tragedy, but it does matter uh, where you live. Often there are not very many services available, and uh, sometimes, uh, you know, more often than not, I would probably say you have to look beyond your state to find uh, the things that you'll need. If I were looking for uh, brain injury help and I didn't know quite where to turn, uh, I think the best phone call that I could make would be to the Brain Injury Association. That hopefully would lead me to a functioning brain injury association in my state and maybe a support group. And those support groups are real uh, information gold mines. You know, it's a, it, it, it's a place where people who know what's available locally will meet and help others navigate that very challenging system. And so that's, that's one of the things that I would suggest starting with. Uh, the other resource that is available to everyone uh, but isn't highly publicized is uh, that every state has what's called a National State Head Injury Administrator. And you can find this person online by just simply Googling that, and uh, you will be taken to a page that has all the information on the State Head Injury Administrator where you live, and just opening up the line of communication with them uh, should yield a lot of information about what kinds of services are available near you. Uh, the Brain Injury Association of America is the lead organization uh, for advocacy in the U.S. <clears throat> for professionals, uh, there is the North American Brain Injury Society that, uh, that sort of uh, has a more of an academic uh, feel to it. And then uh, 
there are uh, a number of smaller organizations, you know, like the American Association of Rehabilitation uh, Nurses, for example, that act as supporting associations. So, um, so the the Brain Injury Association, uh, North American Brain Injury Society, and then the uh, National Association of State Head Injury Administrators are all very key. There is one accreditation association that's also very important called the American Academy for the Certification of Brain Injury Specialists and what they do is they educate and uh, train people to become certified specialists in brain injury. This is a very uh, key uh, certification to have at any facility that you know claims to be a brain injury specialty center.